Hello, welcome to this short video where I will be showing you an interactive sonification project. The project analyzes statistical data from Plymouth Argyle Football Club and presents it with a visual interface. Now, before we look at the project, I would first like to define what sonification is. Sonification is a means of analyzing complex data and portraying it as sound, specifically sound without speech. Data often tends to be visualized usually in the form of a graph or a chart. This of course is a very useful way of analysing data as you can pinpoint values and compare trends. However, people forget that visual data does have its limitations and data can in many cases be better perceived by other means, such as by sonifying it. Sonifying data brings the data to life. It lifts numbers off the page and envelops you in the world of the data that you're analysing. This often gives a broader picture and the changes to the frequency, amplitude and the stereo field make full use of a sense which is often neglected, your auditory system. And of course, listening to data doesn't prevent your eyes from being used, so it can be very useful to be able to both hear and see data. Right, so let's go into the project and have a look. But before I demonstrate the patch, I briefly want to talk about what exactly I am sonifying here. The whole idea of this project is to find out whether the size of the crowd at Plymouth Argyle FC home matches influences the performances of the team on the pitch. The data used aims to spot a correlation between the average home attendance and the total number of points obtained at home for each season. In total, 92 years have been analysed, starting with the 1924-25 season all the way to the 2015-16 season. The reason for just analysing home games is because large travel times, long distances and the prospect of poor weather won't have much impact on the home crowd, whereas they would for the away crowd. The data itself was obtained from Greens on Screen, which is explained in the Further Info subpatch. Now I have explained what the data is about, it's time to demonstrate the system. OK, here we go. Despite my brief explanation, you might be wondering specifically what you were listening to there. Essentially you were listening to three elements, three data sets. The first one, here, is the data of a total number of home points per season, with a win adjusted to always count as three points. The higher the number of points, the higher the pitch of the oscillator. We also have the average home attendance plotted here. It was designed with the intention to sound like a football crowd. And just like a crowd, it sounds louder, noisier, and gets more animated when the attendance is high. Finally, the seasons where more than 55 goals were scored have been plotted here. This is represented by a beep. The purpose of this is to find out whether more people watch their team play if lots of goals are being scored. Now, I will give you a quick run-through of the controls. The patch is simply operated by first pressing the start button. The play pause button enables users to pause the data and when paused, users can scrub through it to listen to individual sections of the data. This is very useful for homing in on a particular section. The volume sliders for each element can be moved up or down. So if I turn this one up and these down, I can now focus on one element. Perhaps the most important option in the control bar is the speed slider, which adjusts the rate of playback. A slower setting helps to hear the data in more detail, whilst a faster setting helps to get a better gist of the overall trend. I haven't got time in this video to explain the advanced controls. You can do that by reading the instruction manual by clicking on PD instructions here. Essentially, you can change the timbre of all three elements to suit your preference. This concludes the demonstration. In conclusion, the project does pick up a trend in data which the graphs didn't. And that is that quite often there is a surge in attendance exactly one season after the team did well. Because on many occasions there is a sudden surge of frequency from the frequency oscillator, followed shortly by a surge in attendance. Interestingly, rarely do they both surge at once. To hear this trend, it helps to really slow down the playback. 
As for the interface, the layout is clean, clear and tidy. The control bar is very simple and easy to navigate, and the patch can be operated by almost anyone. The display is split evenly with the data sets on the left and the controls on the right. It perhaps needs broadening, as it is very much in a portrait layout. The controls in some cases have been given non-quantifiable names, such as crowd rumble and crowd proximity. These present the interaction at a basic level, and are much friendlier than defining the sliders as what they actually are. On to the interactivity. Well, I think as far as screen and mouse setups go, this does a good job. The sliders respond well, and the patch is engaging both audibly and visually. In order to improve the interaction, you would have to operate the patch via a physical controller. Perhaps a MIDI controller with physical sliders and buttons, and maybe a touch screen to scrub through the data. The physicality would connect the user even more to the data. That concludes this video. I hope you've enjoyed my interactive sonification project.